coming over this church tonight. Why? Because when the angel of the Lord came, the light of God shone in the prison. We greet all our viewers in the mighty name of Jesus and we pray today that even as you listen to the word of God that God will touch you, God will heal you, God will transform you and God will grant you a supernatural miracle. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 7, 3 to 15, we are reading, and Samuel said to the, all the house of Israel, if you are returning to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away foreign gods and the astronaut, the female deities that from among you and direct your hearts to the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Now we find here that there is a trial, there is a problem, there is a challenge, and the Israelites have been called upon to put away the foreign gods and astro the female deities. Now we must understand in verse number four it says, so the Israelites put away the Baals and Ashtoreth and served the Lord only. Here you find there is a plan of God for the children of God and Samuel is directing his attention to the hearts of the people of God and he is coming back to those people that need to be transformed and shift to another level but he is beginning to bring spiritual accuracy to a prophetic mantle that is giving divine direction to the people of God to advance to the next stage of their lives because he is telling them that listen the issue of progress, the issue of success, the issue of deliverance and the issue of breakthrough against the Philistines lies in your hands. What he's saying to them is that you can get to the next level if you know how to deal with situations of the heart. And so he's speaking to them about progress and he's telling them progress is tied to your heart. And he says, listen, you need to put away the foreign gods. He says, Ashtoreth and the female deities from among you and from your hearts and God will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. Many people are seeking deliverance but no transformation in the heart and the mind. So if you need to really walk in deliverance and walk in the supernatural and understand how I'm going to defeat the Philistine in the season, irrespective of what the Philistine says, I come to tell somebody that God will raise you up if your heart is on the altar you can shift to another level I don't know about you but I come to tell you when your heart is on the altar there's a supernatural power that will locate you and shift you to your divine destiny and here we find that God comes to them and tell them listen Samuel through Samuel and he says listen the foreign gods got to go that means he was beginning to dissect them and tell them listen I'm calling this nation to repentance. That means I desire inward repentance with all your hearts and then it will be an outward manifestation. What he's saying is that when the foreign gods die on the inside, then on the outside I'm going to see the glory of the most high God. And not only I'm going to see it, but the Philistines are going to see there's a God in Israel that knows how to fight for his people. Why? Because my heart is on the altar. I don't need to tell the Philistine anything when God is fighting for me. And so he says, the inward was more important than the outward. And then he says, listen, I want you firstly to deal with your heart. I want you to put away every assignment of Satan, every uh, demonic thought, anything that's not of God. I want your heart to be convicted and to be transformed and to be brought back to the almighty God. He says every foreign spirit leave your heart. Every foreign worship come out of your body in the name of Jesus. Anything that I've been bowing down to has to go in the name of Jesus. I've come to talk to somebody that when God gets a hold of your heart and when your heart is purified then God can do extraordinary things in and through you and so Samuel begins to bring a prayer strategy and he begins to help them to discern that I'm serving a God that wants you to understand strategies principles and kingdom uh, principles for advancement and he brings them to a dimension and he says man you can't fake this you gotta deal with your heart and what he's really saying to them is no man can serve two masters you will either love the one and hate the other but I come to tell the people of God today that if you are able to love God with all your heart with all your mind with your soul then God can do the extraordinary for you he's saying now let's get to the place where we circumcise our hearts where we understand that our loyalty must be for God so when our loyalty is for God our enemies will be defeated you see false worship has to die 
Because what was happening to the Philistines, the Baals, which is a spirit that operates, is a god of the weather. And the Baal is a spirit that brings you success, even financial success. And Astaroth was attractive and was, was a, a, a deity of, of, of sexual pleasure and fertility. And we find that these two gods were number one in the lives of the people of God. And God is saying to the people that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added. And God is dealing with them. And here Samuel is saying, listen, the, as the Baal has got to die in your life. The asteroid has got to die in your life. I've come to kill Baal and asteroid in your heart so that you can advance supernaturally into the dimensions of the spirit and experience something you have never experienced in your life before. I don't know who I came to talk to but today every demon of Baal that has been an idol in your life, I dethrone it by the blood of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Every demon of asteroid, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Why? Because I pray today that Israel will come back to God. That the people of God will be aligned to the word of God. Samuel was speaking. He was telling them, listen, don't worry about the devil. First get your life in order. Prepare yourself on the altar of the most high God. If you want victory, then go to God and circumcise yourself and renounce all evil idols in your life. I've come to say every demonic idol in your life must be renounced, rebuked, cast out and every child of God has to come back to the word of God to the cross of Calvary we got to come back to Jesus forget about your ideologies and thought patterns it's going to kill you eventually you're going to walk in defeat but yes Samuel says I'm going to teach you how to walk in victory children of God when you know how to repent how to be reconciled how to take the blood and put it on the altar of your heart and your mind and advance to the things of God. Samuel makes a call. I make a call to you children of God. Don't play church. Don't play church. You got to straighten your life out. If you're going to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost in 2018 and in this generation. Samuel brings the alignment. You will defeat your enemies when your heart is on the altar. I don't care what the devil does. Your children will come back to God. Your families will come back to God. Everything will be reconciled because when you walk with God, God will see your heart and do something extraordinary. Samuel said, get all Israel to Mizpah. And I will pray to the Lord for you. And they gathered at Mizpah and they drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said hey, we have sinned against the Lord and Samuel judged the Israelites at Mizpah. The Bible says that Samuel was the prophet but God told him judge my people. Why? Because my people will die in their sin if you don't judge them. He said judge them. Make sure they know that they are children of the most high God before the devil kills them. He said, judge them. Why? Because not because you want to destroy them, but because God wants to lift them up. And so Samuel said, listen, I, I'm drawing some water. I'm pouring it before the Lord. And I'm going to fast and pray. I'm going to seek the face of God. Because I don't want this thing just to be a fake thing. I want to get this thing right with God. And so here comes the prophet. He said, let's get down on our knees. Let's abstain from food. Let's do what it takes to crucify the flesh. And come in alignment with God. Because in this season, we are not going to lose. We're not going down, but we're going up. The more the enemy comes against you, we're going up. And so Samuel, he does something. He says, let's fast. Why? He says, we have sinned against the Lord. We have gone against God. That's why he said, Mizpah, the place of prayer, is in the same place where Laban even separated from Jacob. And Jacob and Laban separated. Mizpah, the place of separation, the place of division, and the place of cutting your ties with Uncle Laban. Coming to the position where you can walk with God in the will of God. Samuel prayed to the Lord. You know what he said? Samuel said, I don't care about my own authority. 
and what I can do. I am seeking higher authority about my situation. I'm seeking God about my problem. I may be going through stuff. The air full of science wants to kill me and take the people of God out. But I say we can still go down on your knees and begin to pray and say, God, remember me one more time. And so Samuel says, children, we are messed up. Baal was the one. Astronaut was the one. All the foreign deities, we walked away from God. We thought this was a joke and we are playing around. But I want to tell you, Samuel is beginning to say, come back to the Lord. Go back to fasting. Begin to pray. Know that the source of your help is the almighty God and that God answers prayer. No matter how low you go, God answers prayer. Stop depending on yourself, Samuel. A people of God, but depend on God. So what are we saying? He started to pray. And the Bible says as they prayed, the Bible says Mizpah became a place where God had to show up. You see, God wants us to pursue the good in the season. God wants us to pursue the cross. God wants us to, to fast, to wash ourselves in the blood. God wants us to come back to Calvary and to know that we cannot do it without Calvary. There's no condemnation to you, but we need Calvary. We need the cross of Calvary where the sins were washed away, where the blood purchased me, where I know that I can stand and pray to the Almighty God. You see, in verse number seven, when the Philistines heard that the Israelites had gathered at Mizpah, the Lord of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. You see, the Philistines will always put fear into you, puts panic into you. But in this season, I command every Philistine that has made you fearful to know the fear of God in this generation. There are people rising because the Philistine spirit has threatened you for too long. It's time for you to take back what the Philistines sold your way. I don't know who I came to talk to today, but if the Philistine has threatened you, well, I come to tell you, you can go to Mizpah and you can fall down on your knees. You can fast and pray and say, no, I'm not, I refuse any demon of the Philistine. I'm going to rise up in the name of Jesus and take back what the devil stole. You see, the Philistines, they knew that when the children of God stopped worshipping Baal and Asherah and every idol, that they were going to be in trouble. You see, every demon spirit knows that when you are in alignment with God, when you are humble and repentant and trusting in the atoning work of the cross, the enemy will be defeated because the blood of Jesus shall never lose his power. We need to know that God wants to raise his people. So Israel was afraid of the Philistines. But in verse number 8, the Bible says, And Israelites said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry to the Lord, our God, for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. You see, they understood one thing, that Samuel needed to be on his knees. No matter what the devil threw their way, Samuel needed to pray to God. Because as long as you are praying to God and speaking to God, a miracle can take place. But Samuel was praying and the Philistines were saying, pray. I come to tell you, no matter what the devil wrestles you with, no matter what you go through in your life, no matter how low you go, as long as somebody is praying for you, like Jesus is making intercession on the right hand side of the Father for you and me. You're going to have victory. I don't care what the fullest time might send your way. Jesus Christ can pick you up in the midst of a storm. Can I hear amen in the house? You see, Samuel does something. He took the sucking lamb and offered it, the whole burnt offering to the Lord. And Samuel cried to the Lord for Israel. For the Lord answered him. How wonderful to know. Samuel cried and the Lord answered him. The Bible says God answered Samuel. But the first thing he did, he took the suckling lamb. He took the offering and he put it on the altar. I've come to tell you today that Jesus Christ has become the offering that can be put on the altar for your prayer to ascend to the Father tonight. And Samuel said, when I put the blood on the altar, God answered him. God wants to answer your prayer. If he can do it for Samuel, he can do it for you. If he can do it for the Israelites, he can still do it for you. We need to pray 
and trust God for the supernatural miracle. We need to understand that the Lord, battle is the Lord's and not ours. You don't need to fight your enemies anymore. I come to a place where I say, Lord, we don't need to fight no enemy. We need to pray to God. Because when you pray to God, God will defeat your enemy. When the enemy rise up, the spirit of the Lord will raise the standards. Come on, against the enemy. And let me tell you something. The devil can do you nothing when you walk with God. The Bible says, Enoch walked with God. He never Never see death. He walks straight into the presence of the Lord. I want to raise some people today and even on television that can walk with God. And let me tell you, when the enemy look at you, he say, this man walks with God and nobody can touch you. There is immunity when you walk with God and you walk under the blood of Jesus. I'm going to hide right under the blood. I say, Samuel said, I know they messed up God. I know they, say they went the wrong way but I put the lamb on the altar. I put the lamb on the altar. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I want to tell you the lamb is on the altar for you and for me. Can I hear a amen in the house? The lamb is on the altar. I've been to hell and I water, but the lamb is on the altar. Every Philistine spirit in Phoenix, in KwaZulu Natal, get ready. I want to say to you and release a word into the spirit, the lamb is on on the altar. Hallelujah. Rabakasata. The lamb is on the altar. That's why I know my prayer can be answered. Why? Because the lamb is on the altar. The lamb is on the altar. That means if the lamb is on the altar, the blood is on the altar. And the blood speaks a better covenant for you and for me. I come to tell you, every Philistine better watch out. Every idol gotta watch out. Every astronaut better watch out. Every Baal, you better watch out because it's time for Elijah to break in the fire and say fire that's gonna fall on the prophets of Baal. The lamb is on the altar. We are moving to another level. So he prayed and the Lord defeated the enemy. Samuel was offering up the burnt offering. The Philistines drew near to attack Israel. And the Lord thundered with a great voice that day against the Philistines and threw them into confusion. And they were defeated before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them as far below then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen. And he called the name of it Ebenezer, the stone of help. Yeah, two, four. The Lord accept us. I want to say to you that the enemy might have come against you. But the Bible says because of the sacrifice. You see, Baal is a, is a God of the weather. And when you look at, look at it, the, the Baal is the weather God and the Lord Jesus showed us that he is the Lord of Lords and the Lord and Jehovah, the Lord of the weather. Because the Bible says, the Lord thundered with a great voice that day and the, and the Philistines were thrown into confusion. I prophesy, all your enemies will be thrown into confusion before the end of this year in the name of Jesus because when my God speaks on behalf of me I come to tell you that the thunder rose from heaven everything that wrestled you up till this moment has to be defeated in the name of Jesus you may know of what was fighting you or you may not know of what is fighting you but whether it is in the unseen realm or whether it is in the seen realm I come to tell you there's a God from heaven that's about a thunder in your favor can I hear an amen there's a God from heaven that's about a thunder in your favor and when God thunders in your favor I'm going to tell you when you go back home today. Every demonic ball and astronaut, every satanic power, every witchcraft spirit, every sickness, every oppression that wants to keep you down will break off
of you in the name of Jesus. I don't know who I came to talk to, but somebody is going to get a loosing and a shaking and a setting free because the same lamb is on the altar. And as Samuel prophesies, you're going to hear the sound of thunder and the enemy is going to be confused. Everyone that plotted you, everyone that planned you, everyone that tried to bring you down, I come to tell you there's coming a sound of a thunder from the throne room of God. I want to hear one voice. That is the voice of God. You see, not only are you going to hear the voice, but the devil is about to hear that God saying, leave my son alone. Leave my daughter alone. Leave my people alone. You see, the Philistines thought they're going to defeat Israel. They thought they'll win. They thought they'll overcome. I've come to tell you that the devil will never win as long as God is on the throne. Hey, can I hear amen? As long as Jesus is on the throne, the devil can give you his best shot, but praise be to God. When God says enough is enough, and God says game over, the devil has to leave. The Philistine has to go. I come to prophesy every sickness that is threatening your life. I speak to it now. Get out of the body in the name of Jesus. Every disease that is threatening your life, I say to you, get out of the body in the name of Jesus. I come to prophesy whatever the enemy planned for you, I say to you, Ebenezer, God is going to help me and help you. Can I hear amen? God is going to help you. This is your season. This is your time. Say my help coming from the Lord. Yes, some men will trust in chariots, some will trust in horses, but my help it coming from the Lord tonight. Can you stand your feet and give God a praise? Because I release him as we plead a blessing. Ebenezer, our God is our help. The Ministry of Supernatural Fire. Apostle Trevor Subramani hails from the north coast of KwaZulu-Natal, Durban, South Africa. Apostle Trevor Subramani is mandated by God to release God's anointing to the nations through large meetings locally and abroad. It is evident to see the supernatural fire of God present during these gatherings, bringing hope to the hopeless, peace to the brokenhearted, and restoring souls into the kingdom. Through the word of knowledge, the Holy Spirit works through the servant of God, delivering people from oppression, sickness, and ensuring God breakthrough in their lives. Visit us at Bethesda Worship Center, 250 Palm View Drive, North Coast, Durban, Phoenix. Supernatural Fire Times, Tuesday at 7 p.m., Saturday 6 p.m., and Sunday mornings at 7.30 a.m. In the mighty name of Jesus, if you can believe it, say amen. I declare that some of
somebody is getting power to get well tonight. Can you scream and shout amen because it's your season? That time of agreement with negative people is over. That time of agreement with the devil is over. 